dust rabbit and dust carrot. Dust. Okay. <laughs> I, I. Like a I like a bunny family. Logic. Anyways, we are ne right now gonna jump into the game. All right. And it looks like it's going to be Cactus Valley. Now, Felipe, this is a new four. I'm sorry, you cut out there, say it again. This is a new map, right? We've never seen Cactus Valley before. Cactus Valley is one of the Cactus Valley is one of those like throwback maps. I am obviously kidding. We've seen like, Cactus Valley before. I mean we've like, seen wait. it we've seen it plenty of times. Like I, I I'm like, not I, I'm I not hope stupid. You're joking on that one. I'm joking. I am no, we've definitely seen this map before, and that's All why right. I'm really excited to cast on it. Speaking of being excited, I am very excited to introduce our player spotting in the bottom left hand corner. He is the red Zerg player. He is Sue! And of course, his opponent from Dust Gaming, it is going to be Bunny! So it looks like, I mean, I'm just, I'm really excited to see, you know, what kind of game we're in for here. And But so far, it looks like we're just going to have a very standard macro opening from both players. We've got Bunny getting that Marine and then into a reactor. So, you know, we're probably going to see a factory soon and both players going for double command. So, so far, no, like, no, like, uh, odd, weird one base shenanigan. Uh, and definitely, you know, considering the fact that the map is Cactus Valley, you know, there's no reason for you to not fast expand. But an uh, interesting thing to note here is that Sue found Bunny, like, right away with his first scouting overlord. So he, like, knows that Bunny is right next to him. So that is going to really determine what kind of build order Sue decides to go for, because there's such a difference in timing versus cross spawn, and then just like spawning next to each other, you know? That is definitely a very good point. Now we are seeing a quick factory and a second gas out of Bunny here. So does that mean we are going to see more of like a mech opening, some Hellion <coughs> or something like that? You know, we definitely could be seeing. I I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that we're probably gonna see, you know, some Hellions and some Marines. Uh, there is a build that Innovation did on Echo against Sue, and it worked really well. It was like a, it was like a Marine Hellbat timing that Sue just uh, was not expecting. And there's a good chance that, you know, Bunny after he bought, oh, oh. lifted the chafe off the Overlord. I love. That. Oh, what? Oh man, I I'm sure Sue was like, I'm sure at that moment Sue was like, this guy, who does that? You know, Bunny does that apparently. Bunny, Bunny does that. Bunny does some North Dog. I mean, I'm pretty sure this guy was like thinking in his mind, "What can I do to catch my opponent off guard?" Oh, I'll lift off my natural command center and I'll kill his overlord. Now we saw that, like back in the Wings of Liberty days, like we saw that on Daybreak a lot. Like Terran players would proxy for their racks, take out two Marines, and then lift their barracks and shoot down that first scouting overlord. Like we've seen this before. And it's so smart. It really just cuts off the Zerg player's vision of what you're trying to do. And honestly, with Bunny sacrificing mining time to get that Overlord means he doesn't want to get this build scouted. He doesn't want his, his timing of when he moves out scouted by Sue. Because then Sue knows when to respond and how to respond. And as you can see, he's already got reactive, Re reactive Hellions pumping out of here. And he, he is definitely going to go for some sort of pressure with this medevac on the way. And with the armory on the way as well, this is exactly what I was talking about. Hellion, Hellbat, Marine, timing. It, it's very strong, and, and I'm glad that Bunny is doing it, because we've seen it work before, and it will work again if Sue's not ready for it. Ooh, but Sue is maybe ready for it, because he did just scout this move out here with those first two links. But the question only becomes, does he have enough to hold this as the Hellions are moving on in? They do catch one creep tumor. The Medivac is unloading. There are about three queens to... Uh, defend this off. Hellions morph into those Hellbats. The Queens are focused fired on that medevac a little. It is injured, but they are going to have to turn their attention to the forces on the ground, which are rapidly moving as to one Queen is going to go down. Uh, one Hellbat does drop as well. Another Queen looks like all of, except for maybe one of the Queens are going to die, but there are roaches on the field here, as well as that medevac going to with um, the few remaining Hellbats couple marines there to just uh, stave off that attack and the roaches now moving across for the counter attack all right now this is really this was really well done by sue how well he defended against it he did not defend it this way 
uh, against innovation. So this means Sue definitely has been preparing for the spell. And you can see he's going for a Roach counterattack, which is exactly what you're supposed to do because you know that the Terran has gone for Hellions and Marines, which means he's not going to have much that's going to defend against Roaches very well. And he's already, he's mostly damaged the Ravages, which means he's going to apply a lot of pressure. Bunny needs to make sure he, he needs to, he needs to pump out something that can handle these Roaches and Ravagers. And you can see he's getting called Banshee. But, I mean, he is in a lot of trouble. He's going to get pressured heavily, and he's going to have to retreat and lift off the CC. And it looks like the Roach Ravager is going to move up the ramp. The Corrosive are going to be dropped onto that Liberator. That Liberator can no longer uh, try to fight this off. Medivac coming in here, going to try and heal this up. Drop those Hellbats, but it looks like they are all going to die. Banshee slowly trying to kill off these Roaches, but it is not going to be enough as they kill those running SCVs, and GG, Sue takes game one. Sue takes game one in commanding fashion. The way he just held against that Hellbat Marine pressure, I mean, it, it, you, I, I, I would have to give that defense like an A, close to like an A+. Plus. Like, you just, you can't defend it any better than the way he did. I mean, he split his drones. He, he had the queens in place. He targeted... You just see how he was targeting the medevac, and the medevac was in red health. So, so it wasn't like Bunny could keep flying around and applying pressure with that medevac either. He was in a lot of trouble, and unfortunately for Bunny, he had to kill. He had to really just cripple Sue. He had to kill his economy to the point where Bunny would be ahead, even if he did lose all those Marines and Hellbats. But he just wasn't able to do that. Sue knew exactly what was going on and responded properly. He had a bunch of roaches out. Bunny was going for a Cloak Banshee follow-up, which is what you're supposed to do so that you can keep continuing to apply pressure, but he just wasn't ready for the sheer number of roaches the Sioux had. And with Bunny not able to near, deal nearly enough damage, it was just way too easy for Sue to just walk on in there with the rest of his army. Yeah, that roach counterattack was exactly what Sue needed to do there. And though Bunny did kill a few of um, Sue's defending queens, it was the roaches were out too quickly he didn't lose that much economy off of that sure he may have lost a few inject cycles but he didn't need that because he just went in and won the game straight up yeah i think the smartest thing that sue did is that he kind of realized that he knew that bunny was going for a kind of an aggression here so he decided you know what i can i can risk it and just drone up really heavily and try to try to get re, re, retain map control with my speed links, or I can get, I can save up my larvae and hit Roche as soon as I see Bunny move out. Sue chose the latter and it paid off big time for him. He was ready for that attack. Oh yeah, a fantastic defense and a fantastic counterattack in game one there. Yeah, and I, you know, this is, uh, this is what I was talking about, innovation doing this build. And it worked really well in his GSO match. It was on it was on Echo and Sue Sue kinda kinda died to that Hellbat Marine timing attack. So something tells me Sue went home, studied what he did wrong, and fixed it in time for his match against Bunny. Absolutely, and I do kinda have to say that Bunny isn't quite the player of what's that innovation. I don't know why his name just didn't come to me there, but <laughs> Bunny isn't quite as good as Innovation, but he's definitely a force to be reckoned with, and Sue was just on top of that game. Yeah, and that, that's actually the thing about Bunny, is that he doesn't have that many notable results to his name. He, he doesn't really have a Premier League championship in which he is known for, uh, so that's why a lot of people were just kind of, you know, a lot of people are probably wondering who even uh, Bunny is. But let me tell you something. Bunny is one of those up-and-coming players right now in Legacy of the Void. This this guy is scary. He's scary good. And he, he has a lot of great TVZ builds that I'm just excited uh, to see him perform here.